Hello, welcome to NPTEL. Myself, Jayanto Das from Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. I will be teaching you advanced materials and processes. There are a couple of lectures we have discussed the relevance of advanced materials and we were just going through the amorphous or glassy alloys. In that particular uh, topic, we are discussing the ideas of a glass forming ability. It means that how we are going to characterize an alloy which is undergoing vitrification during solidification or let us say rapid solidification. And now, if someone design an alloy composition and how will we compare between other composition whether the newly designed composition is a better glass former or a worse glass former. In that direction, we talked that the larger the critical thickness means the slowest possible cooling rate so that we can vitrify the whole uh, melt at a lower cooling rate or critical cooling rate R c the better the glass former. Okay. Means two composition one require very high rate of cooling another one need very slow rate of cooling for vitrification. So, the alloy which need slow rate of cooling is a better glass former. However, we can somehow put the same glassy alloy into a, a differential scanning calorimeter and we can measure some characteristics temperature. And through that we were evaluating the glass forming ability of the alloy. So, today we will continue that discussion and try to look at what are the different empirical relation we have talked about or people or researchers think about. So, so far I said that the reduced glass transition temperature which is uh, quite important and it is basically the ratio of T g which is a glass transition temperature and divided by T l, T l is the liquidus temperature where uh, a crystal melts or let us say a supercool liquid reach to a, a very low viscosity value. And um, similarly, we can uh, uh, talked about the stability of the supercool liquid region. What I want to mean that if we uh, take a DSC stress and which looks like such a way and here this is the T g and here this is the T x. So, the temperature difference of these two characteristic temperature will give you the stability and the larger the value of delta T x is the more uh, stronger the liquid is and more stability of the glass is or easy glass former is. Okay. So, uh, this is the way we defined the delta T x or uh, parameter. However, we can also very similar way like the reduced glass transition temperature uh, people talk about the alpha parameter which is the ratio of the crystallization temperature and liquidus temperature. And uh, then uh, there are some other parameters like beta parameters uh, people talked about in this case here we take basically this alpha parameter where 1 plus alpha is basically introduced or let us say some new beta parameter which are considering T g, T l and T x. So, uh, a more uh, we have seen a very uh, important and more reliable parameter which uh, J p Lu has proposed which is the gamma parameter where we consider uh, all these three characteristics temperature because if we keep on heating this liquid then ultimately uh, it will go to the reduced to the liquidus temperature. Okay. So, all these three characteristics temperature of 
a glassy material has been considered in this particular case and uh, you can see some of the uh, real value uh, and uh, how is the relevance of these empirical criteria. So, please have a look at this table where um, let us say uh, maximum thickness of a glass if it is 1 millimeter in one case it is 10 millimeter in another case it is let us say 100 millimeter. Okay. And then you see the alpha parameter value is basically uh, increasing. Okay. So, alpha basically means that this T x which is the crystallization temperature by the liquidus temperature. So, this means that if the liquidus temperature goes down and if the T x goes up then we can get a larger value okay. and this is a representative of a better glass format. And therefore, on the other hand when somebody try to cool that uh, liquid and then he find out that the maximum section thickness of that glassy alloy is very much high. Okay. So, these two things uh, two things are very much well linked hmm. very similar way that relatively very slow cooling rate we can achieve a larger casting thickness as I said just few minutes ago. And uh, so, um, even though there are many different empirical parameters has been proposed so far, but the meaning or, or, the, or the idea behind uh, the discovery of all these empirical uh, formula is, is basically the same. Now, uh, if you look at the same glass and measure this characteristic temperature and measure the value or calculate the value of beta. So, here you see that the 1.57 to 1.87 it is increasing. So, the larger the section thickness the larger the beta parameter. Now, also a very similar way um, um, let us say the gamma parameter which is also little bit higher. So, from a metallic glass uh, to a bulk metallic glass and a much larger size glass is possible when these uh, um, empirical uh, parameter values keep on higher. Okay. So, this is somewhat very interesting and we can we able to characterize all the different uh, glassy alloys and put a marking on them which one is a good glass former and which one is a bad glass former. Okay. Because ultimately if we really need to vitrify an alloy we have we need a a very uh, um, important uh, uh, parameter and, and this important parameter uh, should characterize a glassy alloy and tell us the characteristic of the alloy how easy to form a glass in this alloy during solidification. Okay. And uh, since these are all let us say empirical uh, formula and um, the physicists try to understand in terms of the atomic packing. Okay. So, a easy glass former how is the uh, atomic packing or let us say some sort of topology of atomic packing and in let us say Oort's glass former how are they. So, along that direction uh, there are many different approaches or let us say models people have proposed and, and tried to satisfy with their criteria, but I found that these three criteria is somewhat very much relevant one is the atomic size mismatch okay. uh, means I have element A, element B, element C and they these three elements are mixed with different proportions okay. and uh, the differences of their atomic sizes must be a crucial parameter on dictating the glass forming ability of such an alloy. Okay. Now, uh, uh, Professor Igami and Waezda also have proposed some criteria uh, based on this kind of topology of, of atomic packing. Uh, Professor Inoue from uh, Professor Akisha Inoue from Tohoku University, who is also a pioneer of this um, of this um, uh, glassy field, uh, he also has proposed uh, some rules, um, uh, and we will be discussing those things in a minute. However, before discussing all these three models, uh, I would uh, uh, I would um, request you to listen to and recapitulate some of our old idea in physical metallurgy. Okay. 
So, in physical metallurgy we know about the solid solution okay? and we know about substitutional solid solution, we know about interstitial solid solution, ordered phases and so on and in that particular uh, uh, subject we learned about uh, Hume Rothery's rule because Hume Rothery's rule said a lot about formation of a solid solution and how to get a extensive solid solubility when we mix B in A. Okay. And uh, there are basically four different aspects of that uh, William Hume Rothery's rule and uh, those are let us say the size difference of the um, alloying elements. Um, let us say electronegativity, crystal structure and the valency configuration. So, uh, the first one was he said that the size difference between the solvent and the solute atom must be less than 15 percent. So, uh, we can it is only possible to, to produce that kind of substitutional solute solution when there is some correlation between the size of the atom. Okay. So, if the size is very very large and another side the solute atom is too too small then it is not really possible to get a uh, solid solution. And in case of glassy alloy why it is relevant because uh, you see a glassy alloy where there is uh, no crystal structure and all the elements uh, which are present they are dissolved in a in a and they have created a solid solution right. And so, uh, Hume Rothery's role even though it is valid for crystalline alloys but we can think about and we try to understand by learning Hume Rothery's rule and how we can put it in, in different topological models people have proposed. Now, uh, the second one is the electronegativity. Okay. So, electronegativity differences between the, the, the two different metals should be low, otherwise, they will make some other kind of bonds and uh, it will be a large ordered phases. Okay. And uh, so, um, it is not uh, recommended to make a solid solution with a large electronegativity difference. Now, it is also expected that the crystal structure uh, uh, of the solute and solvent atom uh, must be very similar. Like if you like to make a, a solid solution of gold and copper, right? both are FCC uh, crystal structure yes, and they also form uh, let us say the FCC solid solution. Uh, or let us say nickel and copper and, and so on. So, it is really possible also the valency of the solute and solvent atom must be in the same order. Okay. So, these four important uh, aspects of uh, formation of the extensive solute solution in uh, solute and uh, solvent atom by mixing them uh, uh, using this Hume Rothery's rule is very much important. And uh, therefore, uh, what we learn out of this that the mismatch between solute and solvent uh, basically the, the, the differences in their red D and uh, multiplied by 100 which should be less than equal to 15 percent. And if we remember this idea then we look at that uh, what is really happen in case of a glassy alloy whether there is atomic size mismatch is preferred or not preferred. Okay. Uh, so, let us look at that. Now, uh, uh, if we look at many different glasses whatever has been discussed uh, whatever has been discovered so far, uh, you will see uh, there are very general observation. Let us say there are many binary glasses, binary means basically two different element is present in that glass where the atomic size ratio lie in the range of 0 0.79 to 1.41 means you see that 41 or let us say here this is a huge percentage and it, it does not follow it seems it does not follow uh, Hume Rothery's rule even though they are solid solution. Now, there are uh, many glasses or let us say most of the glasses which has some values like that and therefore, this atomic size mismatch. Uh, uh, or, or more mismatch is preferred to form a glassy alloy okay. and then only probably we can make a cluster and those cluster will be more close back cluster which will give us, give us the stability of those glassy clusters okay, instead of some crystalline clusters. 
and therefore, we often call that these metallic glasses follow a anti humro 3 rule. Okay. In case of crystalline alloy to form a solid solution humro 3 rule is important. However, in case of glassy alloy these anti humro 3 rule uh, or, or let us say the glassy alloys follow a anti humro 3 type of criteria. Now, Igami and Waisa they were thinking about uh, why do not we uh, 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 consider the atomic level stresses uh, that are generated when we mix A, B or C or D a different type of atoms. What I want to mean that let us say um, I may have uh, two different size of atoms and, and I mix another uh, third atoms and uh, let us say uh, this, uh, this atom which was uh, present uh, previously there and they are somewhat like a like a unhappy and let us say uh, somebody is, is occupying more space they are somewhat like happy. Okay. So, so, happy and unhappy type of situation and, and these smaller atoms are a bit more stressed. Okay. So, uh, in that way we, we try to make those uh, clusters uh, due to um, happy and unhappy by mixing happy and unhappy atoms and there are some critical concentration which is favored to form a glassy phase. And uh, therefore, we can think about these kind of atomic level stresses and definitely when you think about atomic level stresses a atom uh, there must be some space around it and there are some spaces around it and, and, and that volume or atomic volume must be considered. Uh, as an example, I can, I can tell you uh, let us say um, if uh, there are 15 chairs in a class and let us say there are 15 students uh, very thin students who are sitting in the class right? and then I, I, I bring another 20 students who are very, very large size and then asking them to accommodate in those classes okay, in, the, in, the, in the same positions. So, definitely the thinner people will be more stressed and they will be rather uh, uh, more unhappy right. And so, uh, uh, the situation is, is like that kind of funny. And so, here uh, let us say the, the volume of A type of atom and volume of B type of uh, atomic volume and the difference if we put and then uh, let us say the critical concentration or the minimum concentration of B required and if we multiply it, it should be somewhat like uh, 0 0.1 okay. and then only uh, this kind of topology uh, will be created so that the glassy phase uh, become more stable. And so, you see that um, uh, whatever these ideas, uh, these ideas are talking about a formation of a cluster and the stability of a glassy cluster. Here cluster means the atomic level clusters I am talking about and not only a cluster, but we learned about the free volume also okay. and the free volume means the excess volume that a glass has then compared to a crystalline alloys. Okay. And uh, even though there are some free volume, however, how do we pack different atoms with different sizes and then put them together to find out a metastability in that cluster. Now, let us have a look at some other model like Professor Inoue's model, what did he talked about. Professor Inoue said that um, uh, the glassy alloy must contain uh, uh, must contain at least three different components or three different elements. The formation of glass uh, become easier with increasing the number of components in a alloy system. This is a very, very simplified approach that definitely if we increase the number of elements, uh, then the it is expected uh, that uh, the, the glass forming ability will increase. But it is not true for all the cases because there are binary glasses developed yes instead of three minimum component so this is a rather i would say a general approach and now uh, he also said that a significant atomic size different should exist which means basically said that it is it should be like a anti humro 3 type of criteria and the constituent elements in the alloy and it is suggested that the atomic size differences should be greater than 12 percent. So, definitely if we really like to make a glass uh, we must choose elements 
which has a, a size difference uh, greater than 12 percent okay, than the main constituent element. So, these are uh, the ideas that go goes along with the direction of Igami as well as the atomic size mismatch and, and anti Hume Ruthery type of criteria. So, there should be a negative heat of mixing and this is very, very important. So, when we mix two different elements, there should be a negative heat of mixing, then only they will be able to form a solid solution, right. And this is very, very important. So, among the major constituent elements of the system. So, uh, uh, we must try to understand these three very important criteria, even though it appears to be very general. However, these are the important criteria to form a uh, solution and, and uh, so that we can give a stability of the glass. But if these kind of criteria or these criteria particularly Professor Inu's criteria is satisfied, then what are the consequences in a glassy melt? So, uh, that must be we uh, discussed and uh, let us have a look what uh, uh, Professor Inouye tried to explain with that. He definitely said that the, the size differences of atomic um, uh, different uh, large or uh, smaller diameter atoms must be greater than 12 percent and there must be a negative heat for mixing. Uh, if such situation arises, actually we uh, favor a dense random pack structure, what I was talking so far in terms of atomic clusters. So, if we have atoms with very different sizes greater than 12 percent and if they have a negative heat of mixing where free energy is favored, then we can produce a very, very dense cluster or very dense random pack structure. And this is not only in terms of topology, because topology talk about only the size. However, the chemical uh, point of view is also important. Here chemistry means that the affinity of different atoms or let us say A type of atom and B type of atom. So, they are difference in their chemistry. And if such a uh, thing happen, then we can have many different configuration and out of let us say n number of configuration, one configuration will have the lower free energy and which will stabilize in the melt in or in the supercool liquid in order to form the glass. So, that was the idea. So, formation of a liquid with a new atomic configuration. So, we have an undercool liquid and I have already created some dense random packed structure where viscosity is very, very high. And in case of that kind of multi component interaction in a short range scale, where short range means basically 2 nanometer or less than 2 nanometer in size, then it will be more and more favored. Okay. Now, if such these three important thing appear in a melt, then what are the other consequences happen? See, these are very much interesting that we basically increase the solid liquid interfacial energy. Okay. And definitely uh, difficulty will be in the atomic arrangement, because we have already created a very random pack structure. A random pack structure means that the viscosity level goes very, very high. A viscosity is high that means that the diffusivity is low and diffusivity is low it means that the crystallization in the melt is very difficult. Okay. So, crystallization become difficult means we can easily avoid or bypass crystallization and if we think about a TTT curve okay, and then let us say this is the time log of time and this is the temperature then we bypass the crystallization. So, this is the crystallization bay and this is let us say the liquidus temperature. Okay. So, this was already discussed earlier and uh, so we increase the viscosity, decrease the diffusivity and the necessity of long range arrangement. It means basically to form a crystal we need a long range order. A long range order basically means that we need atomic diffusivity in order to form that long range order, but we are suppressing that ordering in the supercool liquid. And once that kind of uh, situation appear, we automatically suppress the growth of the crystalline phase also first is the nucleation of the crystalline phase is suppressed. And once these two things happen, 
we automatically increases the glass transition temperature and there is a decrease of the T m and increase of the T g by T m which basically means that a, a reduced glass transition temperature um, uh, can be increased and we can easily form a glass. So, professor Eno's criteria even though it looks very simple, but it tells almost or it summarizes all the criteria whatever has been discussed by several people. And so, ultimately uh, uh, as I said earlier that delta T x which gives us uh, a idea of a of a of a stability of the supercool liquid which means the T x minus T g okay, as it increases the stability of the glass is also increases means that the composition is a better glass former. Okay. And now you please have a look at the, the y axis in two different sides. Here, this is the T max means maximum thickness of the, the of the cast glass, and here this is the minimum cooling rate required to form the glass. So, as the T x delta T x increases, then as the delta T x increases, okay, so from here to here the required cooling rate is low. Okay. So, here this is 10 to the power 3 Kelvin per second and here it is 1 Kelvin per second. Okay. So, this is a better glass former palladium copper nickel phosphorus. At the same time the, the maximum thickness from a 1 millimeter we can reach let us say something like 20 millimeter. Okay. So, uh, by looking at this plot we realize that these are very very important parameter and uh, so uh, if we produce a glass we need not to measure its cooling rate however by looking at the microstructure and confirming that it is only a glassy phase then we can surely say by measuring tg tx and tl we have developed many different empirical uh, formula that says that the glass is a better glass former or a worse glass former. However, before designing a new glass we can consider professor Inouye's criteria or atomic size mismatch or professor Igami's criteria and look at different elements and calculate their heat of mixing and then by some computational approach we can design new glasses. So, there are many many different glasses uh, which has shown that it is really possible to design some new glass or a better glass by considering both thermodynamics as well as some of these uh, topological models. So, um, uh, these models are definitely important however, there are uh, many and many different uh, criteria or let us say physical parameters are also important in order to describe the good glass forming ability. And those um, uh, parameters uh, even though uh, we will we will discuss uh, in, in the next class. Thank you.